This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research to talk about world-class benchmarking. Today, I'm going to talk about the company SATS, Sats Limited, in Singapore. First of all, let's get some background on the company. Sats Limited is a Singapore-based provider of gateway and food services. Its main operations are in Changi International Airport. What a beautiful airport that is with an additional presence in 45 airports across Asia. It also has operations at Singapore's cruise terminals, Marina Bay Cruise Center. Food solutions account for 57% of revenues, and the gateway services contribute 43%. Let's understand more about the company. We can see that the market capitalization is about $4 billion U.S. dollars, with $12 million in average daily turnover. A very, very steady share price, Uh, means a beta that's close to zero at 0.2. It's in the industrial sectors and it's in the industry of transportation. Tomasek Holdings uh, owns 43% of the company uh, and 55% is free float. So let's get a little background on what's going on here. SATS operates in 51 cities in 12 countries, having the largest food solutions and gateway services network in Asia. The company has maintained its market share of 80% of the Changi Airport. SATS Food Solutions segment offers a variety of services such as in-flight catering services, institutional and remote catering, food distribution and logistics, chilled, frozen, and retort food manufacturing, which means thermal sterilization and packaging, and airline linen and laundry services. Its gateway services include ground handling such as ramp and baggage managing, passenger and apron services, cargo handling, and logistics. Its gateway services also is security, a lounge management, and a cruise terminal operation. SATS should be able to scale up its food distribution business to its JV with BRFS.A, which is a Brazilian listed company, which will provide processed meat and manufacture branded foods for retailers, restaurants, wholesalers, and ship chandlers. SATS plans to grow its in-flight catering food solutions business in the region. And this is likely to bear fruit as it is teaming up with BRF, which is in the top 10 among food companies globally in terms of size. So let's look at the breakdown here. And we can see revenue breakdown out as of fiscal year 2016. Food solutions, 57%. Gateway services, 43%. And 82% of the revenue comes from Singapore, with the majority of the rest coming from Japan. So actually, the regional expansion of this company is pretty minimal as far as revenue is concerned. So let's look at world-class benchmarking for the company. And here we start with the chairman, who has been chairman since May of 2003, Mr. Edmund Chung Y. Wing. And since recently, this has uh, been turned over, the independent chair, chairwoman in this case, Yulin Go Yiu Kiang. From, also from Singapore. So let's look at the CEO here. And the CEO is Tan Chuan Lai. And he's been CEO from April, 20, April 2012 to December 2013. And he's been recently replaced by Alexander Charles Hungate, which was January of 2014 to the present. So we can see that the performance of this company over the periods that we look at global or world-class benchmarking is going to be split between these two. So first, let's look at the performance of the prior CEO. And what we can see is the ranking, the profitable growth ranking was a two. And what we can see is we give a little gap year to give the new incoming CEO time. Uh, we can see the performance is a number one ranking. So excellent work by the new CEO. So the profitable growth ranking is number one. It ranks bet among the best 140 of 1,400 large industrial companies worldwide. So let's look at the profitable profitability and growth. We can see profitability has been ranked basically at one for the last five years, and growth has been rising. So we can see that growth now is slightly above average at four. What I care about most is where is where is this change happening in growth from eight to a six to a five to recently a four ranking. Well, let's take a look. And first, we'll look at profit. We'll look at asset utilization, which is relatively low or moderate at seven. Profit margin now is number one. Fantastic. That is what's driving it. As far as the growth side of things, margin change has been strong, but sales growth has also helped. 
we're seeing sales growth improve from a 9 to an 8 to a 7. So the fact is, is that if this company is to grow further in its profitable growth and maintain a number one ranking, it really needs to focus on asset utilization and sales growth. So there you have it. Excellent job. And sign up for our, our newsletter and become a founding member at becomeabetterinvestor.net slash join. Founding member subscription will close on the 31st of December, 2016. Party night.